Okay, so in this activity, what we're going to look at is the principle of thermal energy exchange. And as you can read from up here, this basically states that the warmer objects come in contact, set states that the warmer object comes in contact with the colder object, thermal energy is transferred from the warmer object to the colder object until all the thermal energy is evenly distributed in both objects. So what this really is saying that if two objects of different temperature, different mass, different thermal um, inertia come in contact with each other, what they'll do is one will cool down and one will heat up until they reach the same temperature. The cooling down and heating up is dependent on their masses and their specific heat capacities. Um, and the interplay between the two of them tells you where that equilibrium temperature will be. Mathematically, it looks like this. You've got your delta E released plus your delta E absorbed is going to equal zero. So the amount of energy released plus the amount of energy absorbed will equal zero. Clearly, the amount of energy released will be a negative value and the amount of energy absorbed will be a positive value. So the negative value will balance out with a positive value to give you zero. In chemistry, sometimes you'll see this written as delta E um, well, gained and lost. So we'd say delta E lost and delta E gained. So sometimes you'll see it, this is the lost part and this is the gained part. Uh, and sometimes you'll even see it written as the energy lost equals the negative energy gained. So they'll take this term and move it to the other side. Either way, it's the same relationship, which is that the amount of energy released plus the amount of energy gained must equal zero. Let's take a look at it in the context of a simple problem where we have 100 milliliters of water at 20 degrees Celsius and we put into it a small piece of iron that is 80 degrees Celsius and when the two of them come into contact the final temperature of the mixture is 22 degrees Celsius meaning the water heated up by 2 degrees uh, to reach 22 degrees Celsius and the piece of iron dropped 58 degrees from 80 to 22. So clearly the one decreased more, meaning that we can understand what the relative uh, difference in mass and or specific heat capacity must be, that this would lose 58 degrees Celsius and this would only gain two. And again, we can't decide whether it's the mass or the specific heat capacity at this point uh, because it's a, a mixture of the two of them. All right, so the question becomes, let's calculate the mass of the iron. All right, what does this look like? Let's calculate the amount of energy lost. The amount of energy lost is the mass of the iron times the specific heat capacity of the iron and the delta T is the final temperature of the mixture less the initial temperature of the iron. Okay, That will equal the mass of the water times the specific heat capacity of the water, the final temperature minus the initial temperature of the water and that together will equal zero. Okay, so at that point, we can start to uh, figure out what we have and what we need to calculate for. We are looking for the mass of this. We know this, 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 and we know zero. So we have everything we need, we just need to plug in the values and, and solve from here. Now a couple things. The mass of the water we'll get to in just one second. Okay, so I just wanted to show how we're going to calculate the mass of the water. 100 milliliters of water is equivalent to 100 grams of water, which is 0 0.1 kilograms of water. Okay, so from here, we're going to write this out as the mass of the iron. The specific heat capacity of iron is 444 joules per kilogram. So joules per kilogram degrees Celsius. The final temperature of the mixture was 22. The initial temperature was 80. The mass of the water was 0 0.1. The specific heat capacity of the water was 4200. These are values you can look up online or in your textbooks. The final temperature of the water is 22, less 20, equals zero. Okay. So putting these into our calculators, what you're going to find is the mass of the iron. If we multiply this out, it's negative 58, which is the temperature change, times 444 is about negative 25752. 
And if we multiply the 2 times 4,200 times 0.1, we end up with 840. That equals 0. Simply isolating for the mass of the iron gives us negative 840. So I bring that over, making it negative, and then divide by this negative term, like so. And we can get the mass of the iron, which is, when you plug this into your calculator, 0 0.033 kilograms or that would be 1, 2, 3, it would be 33 grams. So the iron is about 33 grams in total or 0 0.033 kilograms. If you want to check your answers, you just simply place the 0 0.033 up here, multiply it by the C. So 0 0.033 times 444 times 58 negative is about negative 840. So it's very close. Um, in fact, it's negative 850 because I, I, I shouldn't have rounded so much here. Um, so you would see that it's actually uh, negative 8. 50, but it's close enough that you can see that that's what the solution must be. Okay, so that's how you do these types of problems. I'm going to show you the back side of the sheet and uh, a different type of problem that you can get with this. Slightly more complicated, but again, not too hard. So in this next problem, what we're going to look at is we've got an investigation where we've got some silver uh, and it's heated to 90 degrees Celsius uh, and then you, so basically we have something that we heat up and then we place it into ethyl alcohol and we know the initial temperature of that, determine the final temperature. So I'm not gonna solve the whole thing, but I'll get us started on this for sure. So what we're gonna look at is that the silver has an initial temperature of 90 degrees Celsius once it's heated. And we know that it is 200 grams. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to write, I'm going to say the mass of the silver times the specific heat capacity of the silver, T2, minus T1 of the silver plus the mass of the, I'll just call it A for ethyl alcohol, is the CA <clears throat> T2 minus T1A. Now, the mass of, the, of this one here is 0 0.2, and then we multiply by the specific heat capacity of the silver. The final temperature we don't know, but the initial temperature was 90. Plus, the mass of the ethyl alcohol was 0 0.3, or 0 0.3 kilograms, times the specific heat capacity of that, and then we have uh, T2 minus, and the initial temperature of that was 5 equals 0. Sorry, I forgot to equal 0 up here. Now, what I'll do is I know that this term, it's going to be reduced, so it's going to become negative. So I'm just going to rewrite it by moving it over to the other side. So again, 0 0.3 uh, In fact, I'm not even going to bother doing that because I'm realizing that I'm trying to solve for T2. So all I need to do is get the value for the C here and the value for this here and then multiply the brackets out. So you can do this, and uh, I just don't have these handy in front of me right now, uh, but you look those up, and all you're going to do simply is to take this one term here, multiply it to the T2, and then multiply it to the 90. Get this term here, multiply it to the T2, multiply it to the minus five, and that will all equal zero. At that point, you're going to have a number times T2 minus a number. You're going to have a number times T2 minus a number. And what you'll notice is that you can then isolate a common factor for the T2 and isolate the variable and get your final solution for T2. I'll leave that as an exercise for you to complete on your own time and see if you can find out the final temperature. Again, it's going to be somewhere between 5 and 90 and since the two masses are relatively close to each other um, 
we'll see it's really going to come down to a relationship between what the um, specific heat capacity is for silver versus ethyl alcohol to see which one's going to if the silver is going to cool down more or if the ethyl alcohol is going to uh, uh, increase in its temperature more so give that a try and see what you get